Few things in life go hand in hand as much as The Simpsons does with guest stars. A quick scan through the official list of guest stars reveals an absolute almanac of famous faces, from actors to musicians to sports personalities. But it might surprise you to learn that not everyone was eager to get their name on the list. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 actors who turned down voicing characters on The Simpsons. Number 10, William Shatner. William Shatner is the purported first ever guest star to have turned down The Simpsons, so it makes sense to talk about him first. Now, it's unknown which episode specifically the writers had Penn Shatner into, though according to Al Gore, it was very early into the show's run, within the first four seasons presumably, given the comments were made on the fourth season's DVD release. Taking to social media in December 2020, Shatner directly responded to a fan, questioning why he had refused to appear on the Matt Groening helmed cartoon while signing up as a guest on Futurama. And quite simply, he didn't know what The Simpsons was. He said, quote, I didn't know what The Simpsons was and I was told Futurama was a sci-fi cartoon. There you go. So yeah, while Shatner did appear on that show, The Simpsons just gave up on trying and had Hank Azaria voice his character instead. Number 9, Sir Michael Caine. One of British cinema's greatest minds, Sir Michael Caine's exemplary body of work dates back to the 40s. But a ticket to Springfield was not an offer that he was willing to accept. Desperately wanted by the writers for the hilarious season 5 episode, Homer and a Pooh, as detailed by David Merkin on the season's DVD release, the role would have seen the legendary Dark Knight actor star as a Pooh's celebrity apprentice. Once he rejected the offer, the role was rewritten to have James Wood slot in instead. Why exactly Michael Caine declined the opportunity to star in The Simpsons remains unknown to this day, though. A caricature of the Englishman appeared in future season 5 episode Burns' Air, though he was voiced by Dan Castellaneta, as Caine, once more, had declined an invitation. Number 8, William Hickey. The circumstances surrounding this one are a tad tricky to investigate, with so few details being publicly known but William Hickey is believed to have been in the running to voice Chester J. Lampwick in Season 7's The Day the Violence Died. Reportedly the writer's first choice for the voice, Hickey had to turn the offer down for reasons currently unknown. Bill Oakley and Josh Weinstein, then writers and producers on The Simpsons, believe that William Hickey would have been perfect for the role, his harsh, raspy voice being the style that they were aiming for, and that he was famed for portraying what had been described as grouchy, mean old men only furthered the justification for Hickey to play the role. However, the character instead went to Kirk Douglas, who, per Nancy Cartwright in her excellent My Life as a Ten-Year-Old Boy book, was a struggle once in the recording studio, refusing to wear the provided headphones and rushing through his lines with two takes at most, amongst other issues. Number 7, Don Rickles. Though a renowned comedian in his own right, the incomparable Don Rickles took to acting tremendously, perhaps most known for voicing Mr. Potato Head in the beloved children's franchise Toy Story. Rickles was reportedly in line for a substantial role in Season 4's New Kid on the Block, tentatively scheduled for the episode's subplot that would see him and Homer come to blows during one of the former's comedy gigs. This, it's said in Season 4's DVD commentary, would have resulted in the pair attending court. Now, Don Rickles ultimately turned the role down, outraged at how he was perceived in the episode. Don also accused the writing team of illegally recording his gigs in order to have access to his material, ready to be implemented into the script to ensure a genuine performance from the actor. Of course, this wasn't the case. Copies of Rickles' shows had been purchased by the staff as they were actually fans of his work at the time. So instead, the subplot, still revolving around Homer, saw the Simpson patriarch and Marge attending an all-you-can-eat buffet that introduced the recurring sea captain as a character. Number 6, Quentin Tarantino. As will become a persistent theme throughout this list, Quentin Tarantino is one of many familiar faces who has technically appeared in The Simpsons without voicing himself. And yes, he is an actor, by the way, even if the quality of his performances might suggest otherwise. See, Tarantino was asked to guest star in the eighth season, Simpsons califragilistic expiala annoyed grunt, Ocious, though he rejected the offer after finding issues with his proposed dialogue. And by the way, I've never actually thought about how you're supposed to pronounce that title. Like, do you do the door or do you just say annoyed grunt? I don't know what's funnier. Probably the latter. Anyway, the episode was slated to see Tarantino as a guest director on the Itchy and Scratchy 
show working on an episode entitled Reservoir Cats, in itself a not so subtle nod to his 1992 feature film debut, Reservoir Dogs. Now the famed director turned the opportunity down, but Matt Groening wasn't one to take no for an answer, so still included the character of Quentin Tarantino, even though they couldn't get Quentin Tarantino. Number 5, Clint Eastwood. Similarly to fellow Hollywood buff Quentin Tarantino, Clint Eastwood has technically appeared on The Simpsons, but again, he didn't voice himself. The skit in question from season 9's All Singing, All Dancing featured the supposed Eastwood starring as an outlaw in western musical Paint Your Wagon, which saw him confronted by an unnamed man in a village who informed Clint that his wagon was sorry looking. Eastwood then states that it could do with a coat of paint before bursting into a big song and dance, hence the episode's name. Now as far as the actual Clint Eastwood is concerned, however, he was offered and subsequently rejected the role of Dr. Wolf, Lisa's sadistic dentist in season 4's Last Exit to Springfield. The role went through a number of possible voice artists as Anthony Hopkins also turned down the offer following Eastwood's unexpected rejection. It eventually went to series regular Hank Azaria who replaced the iconic Psycho star Anthony Perkins after the six-year-old tragically passed away prior to recording. Number 4, Sheldon Leonard. Guest appearances on The Simpsons don't always guarantee a recurring role, but it does happen on occasion. Notable occurrences include Marcia Wallace as Edna Krabappel, Phil Hartman as both Lionel Hutz and Troy McClure, and Joe Mantegna as Fat Tony. The Simpsons' writers almost had a different idea in mind for the latter of those though, having reportedly tried and failed to obtain the illustrious Sheldon Leonard for the role of Springfield's mob boss. Now Sheldon was renowned for playing heavy gangster characters, with his thick New York accent making him a convincing choice for any such role, Fat Tony included. Season 3's Bart the Murderer featured the first appearance of the mob gangster, which sees Bart hired to bartend for the Springfield Mafia at their demand. It's unknown as to why Sheldon Leonard was unable to appear in the role, though he passed away just a few years after the character's first appearance at 89 years old. Number 3, Bruce Willis. Seemingly adamant against The Simpsons as a concept, Bruce Willis was approached on two known occasions for a guest appearance, both of which were ultimately refuted. The first saw him, Sylvester Stallone, and Arnold Schwarzenegger requested to star in season 5's 10th episode, a spot they had allegedly agreed to so long as their restaurant brand, Planet Hollywood, was worked into the script. This, it seems, was executed by the writers, written as the subplot for Springfield, or how I learned to stop worrying and love legalized gambling. Ultimately though, the trio were unable to record their lines and their appearances and associated plot were dropped as a result. A few seasons later, Bruce Willis was again requested by the writers, this time for season 9's When You Dish Upon a Star. He, alongside then-wife Demi Moore, was the second choice to play a celebrity couple in the episode, replaced by Alec Baldwin and Kim Basinger in the final product. Reportedly, numerous other big names were considered for this turbulent role, including Bruce Springsteen, Tom Cruise, Nicole Kidman, Goldie Hawn, and Kurt Russell. Speaking of, number two, Tom Cruise. The Simpsons' staff shouldn't take it too personally that Tom Cruise has never lent his voice to their show. After all, Cruise is yet to sign up for a voiceover role in his career, preferring to stick to live action pieces. Regardless though, twice has Tom Cruise been approached by Matt Groening's team with a role in mind for him, and twice he has refused their offers. The first of these came in the aforementioned 10th season episode, When You Dish Upon a Star. As mentioned, Alec Baldwin and Kim Basinger were ultimately chosen to play the celebrity couple in the episode, but Tom Cruise and his then-wife Nicole Kidman were approached before them, following Bruce Willis and Demi Moore turning the show down. More notable, however, was The Simpsons' first attempt at landing the actor. The writers had hoped for Cruise to appear in season 4's Brother from the Same Planet, and would have seen him play Bart's mentor, purposefully also named Tom. Once the Mission Impossible star rejected their plans, though, the role went to Phil Hartman. Despite the lack of Tom Cruise in the episode, the character itself was, of course, heavily influenced on Tom Cruise's role in the Top Gun franchise, being an F-14 pilot in the US Navy, and of course, riding a motorcycle. Number 1, OJ Simpson. As revealed in 2018 by showrunner Al Jean, OJ Simpson was being eyed up for a potential appearance on The Simpsons in 1993. Jean wrote via Twitter on the 11th of March 2018 that it was ironic of Fox to air the 2006 OJ Simpson The Last Confession special 25 years to the day that The Simpsons episode that he was penned for, that being season 4's classic Last Ex 
exit to Springfield originally premiered. And that's because he was set to star as the Smartline panelist before Dr. Joyce Brothers was selected upon Simpson turning down the gig. And of course, O.J. Simpson himself soon after was tried for the murder of his ex-wife and her friend in 1994. Needless to say then, O.J.'s acting career was all but finished by the mid-90s. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Are there any other actors who nearly starred on The Simpsons that I missed off here? Let me know and while you're down there, if you could, please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.